All right, what's going on, everybody? I'm Blitz5, and hope you guys are doing well. And in front of us, we have the patch notes for update 16.1. And normally, this is a fairly long video, but these are some of the shortest patch notes I've seen in a while, so this should be a little bit quicker. We're going to clarify some things at the end and also show off some new skins that are coming to the game at the end of the video. I'll have all of that stuff in the topics. You can just click ahead in the description, also in the comments, if you guys just want to skip past the beginning part of this video. Um, but here, the first thing that they're mentioning is that the update, the patch notes are being combined with console and PC. I think this is a great idea. It's confusing that they'd put out PC patch notes and then wait a week later, put out the console ones. Normally, they'd pretty much be exactly the same, but you'd have to look like line by line for maybe like an individual change or something that's tweaked. But for the most part, usually they're pretty similar. And now... If you scroll down in the patch notes, like say if we go to the very end here with the bug fixes, you'll see that they're putting in parentheses which ones are specifically for PC and which ones are specifically for console. Um, in terms of when this update is going live, there's no exact information here, but if we're just following the normal schedule, this will be one week after today for PC. So as I record this video and as the patch notes go live today, it is February 9th. So next week, this should go live on February 16th for PC. And then normally the following Thursday would be console. So that would be taking us all the way to February 24th, unless these updates are happening at the same time, which did happen when PUBG went free to play on January 12th. But for the most part, usually console is one week after. But unfortunately, uh, there's not that data is not included in these uh, patch notes. Uh, so let's get into the information. Uh, in any case, we'll be seeing this in a week or two, depending on what platform you're on. And not much in this update, but we are seeing a surprise weapon balance, which for me was a surprise because I feel like the game is roughly pretty balanced weapon-wise right now, except for the barrel still being pretty strong and 7.62 weapons. You know, still kind of dominating the battleground, but really the 5.56 still has a strong uh, place in the game. And with this, they're actually buffing the M4. So the M4 is getting a one damage increase, which is going to make this gun definitely feel... Uh, I know it's just one damage, but when you track all the time to kills versus two vests and three vests, this is definitely going to make the M4 a better pickup. And then what's really nice here is that they're increasing the damage drop off another 10 meters. So for like mid range sprays, and then the bullet speed is going to be a little bit faster as well. So this should just feel a little bit more accurate when you're doing those kind of mid range sprays, which is going to feel really good against 7.62 weapons or other people on the battlegrounds. And then this is pretty interesting. So the MK-12, was, which launched during Tago, here's the weapon uh, right here. It is the newest DMR to the game, 5.56. It's actually being added to every available map. So when you think about DMRs, there's three main ones. We have the SLR, the SKS, and the Mini-14. And the Mini-14 has always kind of been the weakest out of the bunch. And the MK is packs a little bit more punch uh, for a 5.56, which is nice. And on top of that, they're giving it an additional damage point here at 51. And uh, this is going to be an awesome gun to use on all the maps. But it's definitely going to change the dynamic, having four DMRs now and having this spawn everywhere. Uh, it's going to be inter interesting to see. I think PUBG wanted to see more people using 5.56 DMRs on the maps. And something they didn't mention here, uh, which I think is unfortunate, I had to find this elsewhere on Twitter from people that data mine, which we're going to cover at the end of this video, is that to compensate for the MK-12 being added to all of the maps, they're actually going to be decreasing pistol spawns, uh, which to me makes sense, right? Pistols are fun to have, but completely you know, pointless in the end game unless you're just having fun or you literally run out of ammo, but obviously you would not choose to use a pistol in most uh, serious gunfights. Uh, so that's going to be happening to balance this out because obviously if PUBG puts in a weapon it redu or a new item, uh, just for that fact, it actually you know is going to make it harder to find the other weapons. So sometimes they have to compensate by doing that. So there's a lot you have to think about. You can't just you know always increase the weapons because it makes other things harder uh, to find in the game. And then here they just mentioned that they're still tracking SMGs and shotguns. Um, shotguns are definitely something that gets complained about on PC, I feel like, a lot more. On console, a lot of people are uh, still frustrated with the SMGs, mostly because of the uh, additional limb damage, but PUBG is still tracking the data. Then we have the Porter truck. Uh, it is now becoming a hard spawn in ranked, or at least they fixed the spawn spots for the Porter map and Tango match in ranked. So now there's 24 set Porter um, spawns and 24 set uh, Pony spawns. And if you're new to PUBG, the vehicle spawns in this game are random. Everything is random. But when you play rank, they do make static vehicle spawns to kind of decrease the randomness because sometimes you land, there's a million vehicles. Sometimes you land, there's no vehicles. And obviously they don't want that to happen in ranked. 
And then in terms of map service, uh, we I already put out a video about this and PUBG already put out a post, uh, but Vakendi is going to be going away and Karakin is coming back in. For the ranked matches, it's going to stay the same for Erangel, Miramar, and Tego. And PUBG is moving from changing the maps in rotation every season to every month. So there's an update every month and there's a season usually every two or so months. So uh, they're going to be rotating maps more often. And remember right now, uh, I think there's seven maps in the game and they're going to be rotating five. There might be eight. I should know off the top of my head, both Haven. It always kind of confuses me, uh, but they're going to be rotating these maps constantly. And then later in the year, we're going to be getting PUBG's newest map, uh, Kiki, which should be pretty exciting. And then I'm going to skip over the rank tab here. They're just going over some of the rewards. You can see the parachute definitely looks pretty cool. Uh, but this is more for the ranked players out there and they know what they're getting. Um, some UI UX changes. They're making some changes to the friends list. Again, I don't feel like this is worth spending too much time here. Uh, quality of life for PC only. And then some performance upgrades. There's a new anti-cheat thing only available on the test server. Uh, this seems like a PC thing. But due to that on PC, the replay mode will be disabled. And really for what I'm seeing, there's not too much to even check out on the test server. Normally... I would go on the test server, get you guys a bunch of footage of all the new stuff. Really, the only things we're seeing here are the weapon changes for the M4 and the MK12, and the MK12 being added to all the maps, and the Porter truck and ranked, which is not a lot. And then I read through the bug fixes and uh, some of the other issues, and didn't seem anything too didn't see anything too important to highlight to you guys. Something that's been like really bothering me when I play on a daily basis. Uh, so again, if you want to get down to the nitty gritty, you guys can look over all the details. But nothing that really stood out to me. So that's the patch notes. That was pretty fast to go through. But what I want to do here is clarify a few things um, from one of the people that leak and kind of data mine PUBG data. So obviously player IGN is one of the biggest posters of this data on his YouTube channel and on Twitter. But there's also another person uh, that goes by the title uh, ASJ Safix, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. This is where I got the information about how DMRs are going to be more common on all the maps now, except for Tago, and that they're going to be reducing the handgun to compensate. So this person obviously was able to look through the data and get a lot more information that we're getting uh, from the patch notes here. And uh, I thought that was interesting. And then at the very end, they mentioned that uh, zombie defense mode is coming back with some added exclusive utility items and weapon. So again, if you're new to PUBG, Occasionally they do event modes or they'll do a PUBG Labs event where they test new game modes or new ideas or they'll do like an April Fool's Day event. I don't know if this is coming in the future or literally right now, but they have done some zombie events in the past and it seems like this is coming back and uh, they usually turn some items that are in the game into other items, right? They'll have like a different feature for the Molotov, which becomes a healing item in, in one of the modes. And uh, it looks like they have something going on here with a spike trap and there's two different versions of the Molotov. Uh, so this should be pretty fun to see, but again, not something that we saw in the update. So, you know, it's always kind of hard to track what PUBG is doing. They always stay pretty quiet with this stuff, uh, which I know is hard out there for everybody that's really curious to see what's coming. All right. And lastly, we have some of the new skins that are coming into the game again, posted by ASJ. And a lot of these sort of have a carnival themed or candy theme, as you can see with the cotton candy vibes from this first outfit. I know people want more military style skins to come into the game. That should be happening allegedly in the new survivor pass, which is coming sometime in March. Uh, then we have another one here. I'm not sure the vibe of this one. I think it says mint chocolate or something on the side. Uh, with that kind of mint chocolate color and then we have some backpacks and helmets very neon candy color vibes I actually kind of like the level three helmets because very neon green it's ugly but also kind of cool at the same time um, and then we have some of the new weapon skins which are really cool the new progressive the latest progressive weapon skin which is going to be the tiger car 98 it is the year of the tiger PUBG's doing a lot of stuff with that theme I'm um, not sure what I think about. I definitely like the SLR and the K9, but not sure if those are skins that I would use over other skins in the game. So probably just something I wouldn't really equip, but I do like the style of it for sure. And then we have some more uh, Tiger, almost kind of like traditional tattoo style vibe there on the top with the Groza barrel and crossbow. Always fun to have a new crossbow skin. I love that it's like a little purple vibe. And then some very plain skins on the bottom. I mean, I'm sure they'll look pretty cool in game though, but again, it's hard when there's so many other great skins. And same thing with this page. I mean, I like the kind of brown vibe here a little bit. The bottom skins I don't really like at all. And these will probably be things that we'll be getting a bunch of duplicates of, unfortunately, and probably some of the hideout crates. 
And then we have some awesome new dances and emotes coming into the game along with some sprays. I really like, if you look at the sprays on the bottom, there's like the hot rod one I think is really cool. And then there's also the PUBG Battlegrounds. And then I got to highlight that they're adding in the Salt Bay style uh, emote, which if you don't know who that is, that is a guy who went viral, a chef for uh, putting salt off his elbow onto steaks. And that is the third emote over. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people will be buying that one if it looks cool in game. And then uh, just a pretty plain outfit there. And then I'm not sure if this is a streamer or like some kind of character. I have no idea. It looks like it says Joe and Lucky, the gaming world of Joe and Lucky. Uh, a lot of pink thing, pink theme there. And then we have this red outfit. But going back, uh, that mutant skin's all right. You don't see a lot of mutant skins, but again, I, I don't think I'd be buying that one. And then another cotton candy vibe skin, which is surprising because they already have a lot of this theme in the game. And there's another, you know, one earlier in the set. And that's it in terms of skins. So again, I know there's, you know, some disappointment in this. A lot of people want to see big updates after PUBG went free to play to really grab that player base. Be really nice to have a battle pass survivor pass something to do right now um, but on the other hand we have to be kind of understanding pubg there's so much that they're working on right now uh, with new things coming into the game new features trying to balance everything out kiki free to play all this stuff uh, but again i mean they knew the free to play was coming they planned this out they picked out that date so it's just hard to say if you're going to put out free to play how do you not follow up with more content so i have to say it's a little bit of a bummer and there's not too much in this update definitely like a filler one uh, but obviously we'll stay optimistic for what's to come in the future and i hope you guys or are, are enjoying your time on the battlegrounds right now as always thank you all for watching on blitz 5 and peace out